watching Tag TV. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 21st of May. Indian Prime Minister meets a Russian president in Sochi to boost bilateral ties. War injured in Pakistan fighting along border in India's Jammu and Kashmir. And Afghan security forces to double operations against Taliban. Now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday held an informal summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Russia's coastal city of Kochi to boost bilateral ties. The details of the meeting were not immediately known, but both the leaders were expected to discuss a wide range of global and regional issues. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met Russian President Vladimir Putin in Russia's coastal city of Sochi on Monday to boost bilateral ties between the two countries. The details of the informal summit were not immediately known, but both the leaders were expected to discuss a wide range of global and regional issues. They were also likely to discuss situation in Afghanistan, threat of terrorism and matters relating to upcoming Shanghai Cooperation Organization and BRICS summit. The Indian Prime Minister earlier held a similar informal summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping in China's Wuhan city last month. More such informal summits between Modi and other world leaders in the coming months are lined up as India eyes to play an important role in global power dynamics. A policeman and three civilians were injured as Pakistani troops resorted to ceasefire violation along the border in India's northern German Kashmir province on Monday. There has been a spate of ceasefire violations along the border by Pakistan this month. One policeman and three civilians were injured in Jammu district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province as Pakistani forces continued to resort to ceasefire violation along the border on Monday morning. Pakistani troops reportedly fired mortar shells in Arnia sector of Jammu and targeted residential areas injuring the three civilians. The policeman got injured after mortar shells hit a police station. Arnia is the biggest municipal town on the international border with a population of over 20,000 people and it is within the firing range of Pakistani forces. Indulging in, in violence is the worst kind of unholy act that can be indulged in, in the holy month of Ramzan. But having said that, let me also add over here that as far as India is concerned, a befitting retaliatory action is being carried out, it will be carried out. The incidence of ceasefire violations have increased in the last few days. One Indian soldier was killed and two civilians got injured when Pakistan resorted to similar unprovoked firing near the border posts of Arnia sector last week. Moving on, a protest camp being held by the families of missing Sindhi political activists was attacked by Pakistani security forces on Sunday. Sindhi activists have long blamed Islamabad of carrying out atrocities on innocent Sindhi people. They accuse any attempt to highlight the situation is muzzled. Pakistani forces on Sunday attacked a protest camp being held by the families of missing Sindhi political activists abducted by the Pakistani military and the Inter-Services Intelligence or ISI. The protesters had been conducting a hunger strike camp in front of the Karachi Press Club. The protest camp was joined by various political parties and human rights organizations including GSN Mutahida Mahaz. The police and rangers circled the camp in afternoon and unleashed bait and charge against the protesters. The protesters resisted the action and many of them got injured and some were also arrested by the security forces. And uh, very sadly, the camp was attacked by the agencies, police and rangers. The people were beaten. Four people have been uh, kidnapped by them and they, they remain missing. And uh, even to the, the violence was carried to the extent that the 
a clause of the girls they were torn and uh, we re we strongly condemn this action of barbarity Sing the activists have long accused Pakistan of carrying out atrocities on Sindhi people as political activists are routinely being targeted in the province They blame Pakistani forces operate with impunity in Sindh region and any attempt to highlight the situation is muzzled In news from Afghanistan in a bid to counter Taliban's spring offensive Afghan defense and interior ministries on Sunday said security forces will double their operations to address security threats in Afghanistan Taliban started its spring offensive last month which has killed hundreds of people civilians so far In response to the terror group Taliban spring offensive Afghan security forces will increase their operations to address security threats Afghan defense and interior ministry said on Sunday The military said the Afghan air forces or AAF commandos and special forces will all double their operations against the group to prevent them from achieving their goals According to Taliban its ongoing spring offensive is a response to a more aggressive US military strategy adopted last year which aims to force them into peace talks Oh the army 14 wilayat ke mai bishtar ba ushara kardam bishtar niruhay ma عملیات ها به شکلی صورت می گیره که تهاجمی است و عملیات های بسیار پلان شده و سنجیده شده است هر روز عملیات های محارب بیره در جهایی که تهدیدات متوجه مردم است را اندازی می کنین و با موفقیت ادامه داره مینوال ا نمبر اف فورم ملیٹری افسرز اند سینیٹرز سید دی کماندوز اند پولیس اسپیشل فورسز ار ویری گڈ ایٹ ایڈریسنگ سیکیورٹی تھریٹس بٹ گڈ ریلیشنز وتھ دی افغان فورسز واز ا کی ایشو دیٹ لیڈ دیم ٹو سکسس Analysts said security officials should build solid working relations with all forces. More news from Afghanistan. Afghan government on Sunday rejected a plan proposed by the Independent Election Commission to reduce the number of election consistencies. The government said the legal period to implement such a plan has expired. Afghan government on Sunday rejected a plan proposed by the Independent Election Commission or IEC to reduce the number of election consistencies saying the legal period to implement such a plan has expired. The government rejected the plan arguing that its legal time had expired while IEC officials said they had dispatched the plan to government a year ago. Meanwhile Office of Chief Executive Officer or CEO Abdullah Abdullah has informed the poll body that they may take each province as a single constituency. Waqt mukam de la de khatir se hukumat pe khpal pishnihadi nazar ke commission te likh le che ke har vilayat yawa hauza si de pe khwab tsir de shakono prosa pe chataki sara makhta ular si. Last week the election observers and political commentators had warned the IEC and the government against decreasing the number of electoral constituencies ahead of the polls in October. They suggested such a move will have negative consequences on the credibility and legitimacy of the upcoming elections in the country. After breaking the record for the most summits of the Mount Everest, a 48-year-old Nepali mountaineer returned to Kathmandu city on Sunday. The mountaineer has scaled the world's highest mountain 22 times. A 48-year-old Nepali mountaineer returned to Kathmandu city on Sunday after breaking the record for the most summits of Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain. Kami Rita Sherpa who completed his 22nd climb on Wednesday last week was welcomed by family and his community members who presented him with traditional ceremony scarves and auspicious food Sherpa reached the more than 29000 foot summit via the South East Ridge route accompanied by 13 other climbers अब यो चाहिँ मेरो जिउको अब कन्डिसन हेर्नु पर्छ जिउ कन्डिसन ठीक छ भने म सधैं रेगुलर दिन्छु हैन अब मेरो जिउको कन्डिसन ठीक भएन भने मैले छोड्नु पनि सक्छ शेरपास लेडीज असेंट टू किम वन सबमिट क्लियर अफ टू फेलो शेरपास इन हिज कम्युनिटी विथ हुम ही हैड शेयर द अर्लियर रेकर्ड एथनिक शेरपास रिनाउंड फॉर योर एंडुरेंस एंड एक्सपीरियंस एट हाई एल्टिट्यूड सर्विस गाइड फॉर मेनी फॉरेन माउंटेनियर्स अटेम्पटिंग टू क्लाइम द हाईएस्ट हिमालयन पीक्स 
In a simple yet unique wedding, more than 100 underprivileged couples tied the nuptial knot during a mass marriage ceremony in India's eastern Siliguri city on Sunday. The gesture by the organizers aimed at reducing financial burden on the families of the brides. As many as 101 couples from across the region of India's eastern Siliguri city tied the nuptial knot on Sunday. The marriages were held according to Hindu rituals amid blushing brides, happy grooms and grooving family members and relatives. The organizers gifted a number of basic commodities, clothing items, sweets and also cash in order to help the couples to begin the new chapter of their lives. <laughs> साधारण गरीब बनवासियों के लिए वो संभव नहीं है इसलिए उनके शादी को मान्यता नहीं मिलती है अब हम लोग इतना बड़ा आयोजन करके उनके गांवों के लोगों को बगान के लोगों को बुलाते हैं और शादी करवाते हैं एक साथ सब होत करते हैं तो उनको फिर मान्यता मिल जाती है Guests turned up in huge numbers to bless the beaming couples who dressed up in traditional attire for the occasion Group marriages are becoming popular, especially among the financially disadvantaged sections of the Indian society as they reduce worries of monetary implications among parents. An event held in India's western Pune city honoured the transgender community on Sunday. The community was honoured for their extraordinary contributions in different fields of life. The event aimed at reducing stereotypes formed for the community. Members of the transgender community were honored at an award function in India's western Pune city on Sunday for their contributions to different fields of life. The event, organized by an event management company, felicitated then transgender people with an aim to raise awareness about treating the community members as equal in the society. The awardees included transgender politicians, a village head and social workers among others. उनके लिए बहुत सी चीजें ना उनके लिए वॉशरूम्स है ना कोई पर्टिकुलर हॉस्पिटल में वार्ड है ये सब चेंजेस मुझे लाने हैं ये करने हैं और ये लोग हम हम लोगों में उठते बैठते हमारे जैसे हैं ये दिखाने के लिए हमने ये इवेंट किया है पहले तो क्योंकि समाज में उनका स्थान मिलना चाहिए the event aimed at giving out a message that transgender were capable of doing respectable jobs rather than just being considered suitable for backing sex work and dancing to earn their living in a landmark verdict in April 2014, India's Supreme Court of India had granted a legal and official recognition to the transgender as the third gender. A man in India's western Surat city claims to have invented the smallest iron press and wishes to enter the Guinness Book of World Records through his invention. The brains behind the invention said he made the miniature iron press as his daughter wanted one to iron the clothes of a doll. A man in Surat city of India's western Gujarat province has claimed to have made world's smallest iron which weighs only 1.20 grams. The brains behind the invention, Pavan Sharma, a textile agent by profession, made the working model of the iron press after his daughter asked for a press in order to iron the clothes of her dolls. The miniature iron press is of 17 mm length, 9.5 mm width and is 11 mm in height. It has been grabbing eyeballs with visitors coming to see the functioning of the press. This press is my working model press, which I am going to be the world record of Guinness Book of World Record. I have given an application for Guinness Book of World Record. After two months, I have come to see it from there. कि भई आपका ये एक्सेप्टेड करते हैं हम एप्लीकेशन और आप इसके डिस्प्ले और वीडियोग्राफी एविडेंस हमको भेजी है तो फिर विश्व की सबसे छोटी आयरन का मेरा गिनीज बुक ऑफ वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड आज हो जाएगा अल्युमिनियम टंगस्टन ब्रास नट्स एंड मोबाइल चार्जर पिन हैव बीन यूज्ड इन मेकिंग द आयरन प्रेस व्हिच टेक्स 15 टू 30 सेकंड्स टू हीट अप शर्मा अचीवमेंट इज रिकॉर्डेड इन द इंडिया बुक ऑफ रिकॉर्ड्स एंड इन यूनिक वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड्स the unique piece will be soon registered in the Guinness Book of World Records. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Watching Tag TV.